Well, you know, and, and I, <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would argue that one of the reasons that uh, DRCR um, and QIND are such amazing long term prospects and potentially short term plays is because of the very advantageous share structures. Uh, QIND only has 100 million outstanding shares The float significantly less than that. Uh, DRCR was like over 90 percent uh, insider owned that. Anytime you watch the share price, it jumps, you know, from 2350 to 24 to this and that. And it doesn't do the incremental jumps that so many other stocks that we're accustomed to being in. And that has everything to do with a limited share structure, which makes it way better for the retail investor to buy in at cheaper amounts. Because like I said, I don't know what the market cap of QIND is right off the top of my head, but I think it's somewhere around 30 million. And so the expectation is after they close on their deal with 100 million in revenues and three to 400 million in assets, is that the share price, even to be at a one one comparison, would have to go up 2x. And so that's something that I think a lot of newer investors are not necessarily aware of. They sometimes chase the hype and volume, looking for something like Sugar Made that I think had 20 billion outstanding shares uh, to keep going oh, up. And of yeah. course, it's impossible for that to happen because when you have that many outstanding shares, there's no way there can be a substantial increase in the share price because otherwise the company would have a market cap larger than Apple. <laughs> uh, QIND's market cap as of... Uh... Today was uh, 25.41 mil. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, like, and even back to the cannabis stock thing, um, I'm not <laughs> against cannabis stocks. I think they're a dime a dozen right now. And I think at the end of the day, there's going to be a few that really take over the markets and own it. So who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> like, I don't well, know. I IGPK, they're selling shirts, they're selling cannabis, they're, they're fine dining, doing fine dining stuff now. <laughs> Who knows? Like, that's the thing, you know, that's a, it's a crapshoot in the OTC. That's why it's important to really find the, the companies that have real revenue, real products, real contracts with uh, municipalities and stuff. So, <laughs> hey, yeah, I, they I, sell I, shirts. I, Eyeless investors have to create their own. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I, see, I, and the thing is, I think that's a very important point because if you look at the market cap for IGBK, it's uh, approximately a million dollars right now. And so traditionally, the metric that the stocks are measured by is approximately $100 million share increments, uh, you know, relatively. And so the expectation can be if you buy a stock that has a $1 million market cap and they don't dilute or add to the outstanding shares, that the expectation is, is for if it takes off, of course, which is a long shot. But if it happens, then you could potentially be getting 100x returns on whatever you invest. And so because that's so uh, grandiose, the important thing for newer investors is that you don't have to bet the farm. The expectation is you can only bet $1,000 on it. And if it doesn't turn into a million, million dollar play then you're only at a thousand dollars but where people uh mess up so often is the the gold fever uh catches their eye and they just put all their money into it thinking man if this thing turns into a billion dollar company i'm good to go but that's exactly the reason that people bet on these plays if you keep your initial investment under three thousand dollars and it doesn't uh you know it doesn't turn out the way that you wanted it to you can always just sell it for tax losses on all the winners that you picked Sure. What are you yeah. talking about, man? That's exactly what I did with that. Uh, no, I was going to say the same. No, I, I, I bet the farm and I and I bet Erocks farm. <laughs> well, but I'm saying I wouldn't put IGPK in the same. Yeah, I wouldn't put it in the same category as Eyeless because they haven't been able to show us their books or any of this other stuff, and we're still yeah. dealing with just you know word of mouth. But Eyeless, on the other hand, is constantly inundated with different people attacking them. And thank mm -hmm. God for us that the people that attack stocks are the ones that don't seem to understand anything or know anything because their FUD is getting worse and worse. But the company keeps producing. Um, you can't argue with an OTC company that's done $525,000 in their first quarter and $19.5 in their last quarter and just in a, in a span of seven quarters and continues to keep producing, continues to keep moving upwards and onwards into an obvious plan in which they have already uh, let us know. And so being SEC reporting, up listening to the QB, having the opportunity to make so much more money synergistically between their lateral, uh, you know, and uh, vertical uh, integration as they're now bringing their uh, manufacturing on, on, on board. 
it's a really magical time. But for so many people, they just expected the riches because they get their uh, positive and negative information from stock twits and companies. Uh, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, you know, you can't, there's certain processes you cannot speed up. You cannot get nine women pregnant to have a baby in one month. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> you can't? Oh you, my cannot, God. you cannot. It takes oh one gosh. woman nine months. Son of a bitch.